So my next video isn't ready for me to show you yet. Since it's been a long time since I last posted a video, I decided to impulse buy another computer to add to my collection that is too big. And this one really is an impulse buy. I just bought it with very little knowledge about it and I don't really know what I'm going to do with it. But anyways, this is the HP Pavilion DV7-6C95DX from around 2012. Part of my excuse, if you will, for buying this is that many years ago I used to have a DV7, a much older version, with a Core 2 Duo and a GeForce mobile GPU. And that machine fried itself, as you would expect. And in my quest to find another DV7 after all these years, I realized most of them are too expensive. And it was while I was looking that I found this model from a recycler based in Kansas. It wasn't even a model that really interested me at all. The one I wanted was the slightly newer version, the 7000, but again, too expensive. This computer cost me $60, which is more than I would ideally like to pay for a computer that's more than a decade old. But considering the market, I guess it's a deal? Unfortunately, HP does what HP does best, which is to be a constant pain in the sass. This time by removing literally all information related to this computer at all on their website. I have found nothing official from HP. The only information I found on this system is from third party sites, which I didn't really know the validity of. But the system booted to the BIOS, so I mean clearly it must work somewhat. So I bought it. It appears to be in decent condition. The display is all glossy because, of course, this thing certainly has its issues. Probably the most significant one I noticed was that the bottom cover was detaching itself from the system. I tried to get it to go back in. I thought somebody just forgot to screw it in before I realized that it's actually toolless. The battery release also serves as a release for this cover, which just clearly doesn't seem like a great idea. But anyway, there's some pretty interesting things underneath the hood. For one thing, this has dual hard drive bays, which is pretty nice for a 17 inch device. This also has a Core i7 2670QM CPU. It has 8GB of RAM, though I don't think this is the original stick, it has no HP markings or anything. It still has its original HP branded optical drive, whoop de doo And while it didn't have a hard drive for obvious reasons, thankfully the drive cable that it uses was left behind so I can still plug a hard drive into it. Probably the most unique thing of all, this computer has a subwoofer in it. Yeah, so I hope the audio in this thing is not trash because I'm going to be very disappointed otherwise. I did also get a battery with this system. It's not the genuine HP one, though it is at least a real manufacturer. I have very little faith in it working since as soon as I plugged it in, the power LED just started blinking immediately. I am using a Dell power supply. It's the same connector and the system does get power. I hadn't realized this, but around the trackpad there's a LED ring, which is kind of cute. Anyway, I'm pretty sure that battery is trash because the serial number is an unsigned integer and it's dated 1980. <laughs> so anyway, there's not really a lot exciting otherwise in this BIOS, the CMOS battery works. Unfortunately, I don't really have any drives around that I can put into this computer. I have a couple old crappy ones, but to be honest, I already know that I'm going to hate that, so it was time to go shopping. In the meantime, while I waited for some parts to show up, I decided to go ahead and just make a bootable USB of Linux, specifically Kubuntu 25.04 because it had just come out recently and I wanted to try it, and it seemed like something this computer should be able to easily run. So I put it in the system and it started booting straight away. Or did it? Because this is as far as it got. 
After this, the computer completely locked up. No input from the keyboard, no activity on the USB, pressing the power button wasn't doing anything. Nothing. I thought maybe it was a Kubuntu thing, so then I tried my Ventoy USB, but that also didn't work. With exactly the same behavior. So it was time to do a sanity check. I ran memtest86 on the system for a while, just to give it something to do, but also because I wasn't really sure if maybe there was perhaps a RAM issue going on. There wasn't really anything obvious in the BIOS as to why it wouldn't be able to boot my USB. And after a period of time, it did produce some errors. Not many, but errors are errors. So just to be safe, I tried a known good stick of RAM in this system, and it still didn't boot. <sighs> in fact, I'll just save the time and say that of everything I tried that was Linux related, not a single thing booted on this computer. At this point, since I was out of ideas, I went and dug out an old hard drive that had an existing Windows 7 install on it to see if that would work. And it did. So I guess this computer hates Linux. I probably should have been more specific when I mentioned Windows 7, I actually meant Windows 2010. This was the hard drive I used in that video. I didn't actually want to use this in this computer, but it was already a Windows install that was set up, so I just installed some drivers on it so that I could use the system more properly. And everything seemed to work fine. I even put the 8GB stick of RAM back in, even though it threw errors, and everything was perfectly good on this monstrosity. This thing has a 1600 by 900 display while it has pretty awful viewing angles. It's otherwise a pretty bright, decent display overall. At this point, I decided to move my next concern on to thermals. This is having a QM CPU, I expected them to be pretty awful, but even during mem test, this fan was screaming, so I wanted to check. And they weren't spectacular, but it seemed like the fan was at least peeping it under control. This thing probably needs a repaste eventually, but I don't feel like taking this whole thing apart. Even under load, the thermals were fine, but not everything was positive because I realized that the score it outputted was really low compared to what a QM CPU should have produced. Compared to my 3740 QM, which yeah, it's a newer CPU, but it should still be up there. And it wasn't. Might need to come back to this later. Well, at this point, the system works, but it's slow as hell because this hard drive is a piece of trash. And I tried again with the RAM and a hard drive put in, and still nothing. While I waited for my parts to come in, I gave the system a pretty thorough cleaning, and I'd say it came out pretty well. Other than the few dents on the lid, it's in pretty good shape, though I did notice that this entire thing is a fingerprint magnet, so it probably won't look that good for very long. A couple days later, I got my first part in, a second hard drive cable, which I bought from some random seller. It somehow doesn't really seem to fit this thing very well, it kind of feels like the connector should be angled the other way, but it'll do. A day later, I got a hard drive in, a 750 gig hard drive from HGST that actually came out of an Apple computer of some kind, but it's the original capacity to what this would have been when it was new, so it'll do just fine. And this is a 7200 RPM drive, so it's a bit more interesting. I'm certainly not the biggest fan of this drive mounting system, but I got it figured out now. Finally, I picked up a cheap 128GB SSD to use as a boot drive. Worth noting, this was a used SSD, which is not something I would normally recommend for a computer that you're actually going to do anything serious on. But for something like this computer where whatever data is on it doesn't really matter, it's not 
the end of the world. This drive was purchased from a pretty reputable seller on eBay, and it comes with a two-year warranty. It's at least a real brand, and it does not have a lot of hours on it, so realistically, it's probably fine. It made things easier anyway, because it meant I could just buy everything all in one load rather than buying things from different places. I didn't really want to, but I ended up installing Windows 11 on this computer. The system doesn't even have UEFI support, so it's not really ideal, and I'm almost certainly going to change that later, but I just gave up on Linux for the meantime because I wanted to get this thing running. Another thing I did is I switched to a genuine HP power supply to see if that made a difference with the CPU, because I was still puzzled over those results from R10 earlier. And yes, it makes a big difference. Looking back at this footage now while I'm editing this, I should have realized this straight away. Checking the power draw under load between these two clips, it's night and day. In other words, it's basically the Vostro 3550 situation all over again. Of course, this did mean that thermals were a lot more realistic. So to be honest, I didn't really have any idea of what to install on this computer. I did all of my testing, and I installed a couple utilities on it, but otherwise I didn't really have any ideas. So because I am me, I started scouring the internet archive to see if I could find any media for this computer, and I found that somebody uploaded the image file from the recovery partition of a 6000 series DV7, and it seemed to suggest that it was for multiple different models, but specifically it originated from a 6B32 US model, which upon researching is pretty similar in hardware to mine. Well, I didn't feel like reconstructing a recovery partition with that image file, and while it is a .wim file, the same as what a Windows install uses, it's very unlikely that this would have worked. But while searching the image file itself, I discovered that the software setup folder with all the applications and drivers was just there on the image. So I extracted that, copied it to the computer, and I decided to try and see what would run on Windows 11. Granted, most of these appear to be drivers, so that's kind of lame. This also required me to enable .NET Framework 2.0 and 3.5, which was a lot of fun because it took 15 minutes for no reason. I also found that this media contained literally hundreds of HP wallpapers from many different years, and even some compact ones as well. Not all of them are for this uh, screen resolution, but still, this is a pretty interesting find. Unfortunately, there weren't actually really that many programs that I could install from this media. There were a handful of third-party things, a couple of HP utilities as well. A lot of it just didn't install. It seems to suggest there was a lot more stuff out of the box, but like I said, I don't have any of the files from a recovery partition, so trying to reconstruct it right now seems pretty unlikely. So I don't really have any plans for this computer, again, I'm just being completely honest, this was an impulse buy. I will obviously cover this computer at some point, it's got some pretty interesting things about it. The hardware as it is is already pretty good, I don't really see a need to upgrade the CPU, and I used my other test stick of RAM to upgrade this to 12 gigs, though who knows how reliable it will be. The drives are obviously more than adequate. I believe that there are versions of these DV7s that have mobility Radeon graphics chipsets, but I'm not sure. And either way, it's probably not worth it to swap the board over that, but who knows. But still, overall, it seems to be a pretty positive start. This thing has its problems, aside from the cosmetic issues. I still want to try and get Linux figured out at some point on this. I'm sure somebody will have an idea and 
post it in the comments. I did try looking for a BIOS update for this computer, see if maybe that would somehow fix it. The one on the system appears to be the original, but unfortunately, HP being HP, deleted all of the drivers for this thing at some point, and while some third-party sites usually preserve some of the drivers, I have found nothing for this computer. But yeah, that's about all I have to say for this one.